Hi everyone, today I want to show you this inverter from Best Tech. Now Best Tech are very well known for making inverters and very high quality inverters at a pretty reasonable price. They're not as cheap as the super super cheap ones but they're pretty much the best quality you can get without spending huge amounts of money. Now this basically goes into your car and converts your car battery power into AC electricity. Now this is the UK version so it has a single UK plug socket. If you get the US version you'll get two plug sockets which takes two pins, two pins. It's just a matter of spacing. You can always plug an extension cord onto this to split it into multiple ports anyway. Now inside the box you get of course the inverter itself then you get the power cable. This plugs in where your cigarette lighter socket is. It just plugs in there and then these screw onto the back. I'll show you that in a short while. Then you also get these crocodile clips for when you want to use more power. And then you get the instruction manual and that's available in multiple languages. It's pretty basic, but it's got everything that you need to know. Now, usually you would just plug this into your car, but it wouldn't be very easy for me to shoot a video inside the car. So I'm doing it with this little adapter here going to a different power source. But just imagine that this is inside a car. So before I plug it in there, I'm actually going to connect it to the inverter. It's pretty simple to do. We just take off these nuts and then screw the cables in place. Now you do want to make sure that these are securely fitted, otherwise a loose connection could cause sparks and generally just cause problems. So make sure you do do them nice and tight. The chances are once you put this on here, you're not going to take it off again for a very long time, especially because it does have mounting points if you want to permanently install this inside your car or your caravan, or if it's a solar installation, something like that. So now it's connected, let's plug it into what is essentially a cigarette lighter socket. And of course, nothing happens at first. Why? Because it's got a switch on the front. If I turn this on, you can hear that the fan immediately kicks in. This is a cooling fan just to make sure it doesn't overheat. The room that I'm in at the moment is actually 30 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot. You may notice that my hands are just a little bit sweaty, but the cooling fan comes on just to keep it cool. Now we've got four USB ports, two here. You can see 2.4 amp, 2.4 amp, which is like maximum output for things like tablets. And on this side, we've got a one amp and a 2.4 amp. Um, but the maximum you can output at any one time is actually 5.2 amp, which is still pretty good. Now, the first thing I want to do is plug in a watt meter so we can actually measure how much power we're drawing out of this. Now, you might look at this and think, oh, isn't that upside down that? Well, no, because British plugs are typically quite large and we have the cable coming out the top. So if you plug it in like that, it's actually just perfect. If it was the other way around, you'd have a problem once you mount this thing permanently. But in my case, I'm actually using something which goes counter to that. This is quite a bulky um, watt meter. So I'm actually gonna have to turn this onto its side so that we can plug this in, or in fact, turn it upside down. Now, I don't think this will cause any problem because the cooling fan can still run. You can see on the output, we've now got 220 volts. And of course, we're not drawing any power because nothing is connected yet. Now, hopefully this fan isn't gonna ruin my audio. Let's start with something simple. This is a CFL bulb. It's rated at 24 watts, 220 to 240 volts. Now this is a 400 watt inverter, so it should have absolutely no problems at all running this. So I'll just plug it into my watt meter. Of course, ordinarily you would just plug this straight into the inverter, but since we're testing it, let's plug this in. Okay, the light has come on and you can see we're drawing 21 watts or 22. Now, as the CFL warms up, it will actually draw a little bit more power, but you can see that it's working exactly as you'd expect. So good, let's find something else to power. Now, most likely you're not gonna power a light bulb inside your car, but something like a laptop charger, it's quite probable. So let's plug in my Apple charger and then plug it into the laptop. Now this laptop is nearly fully charged, so I don't expect it to draw too much power. You probably heard it go blink. Now, like I said, the laptop is nearly fully charged, so it's not actually drawing much power. It's basically just putting a little bit of juice in, then pulling back a little bit of juice. It's pretty much at 100%, but it is charging the laptop. And you know, if you have your laptop charger, you'll be able to charge it inside your car as well. Now, another common use would be charging batteries. For example, I've got this charger here. Let's plug it in. This is a camera battery, but it's also used for things like portable monitors. Let's plug this into the charger. You can see it's charging and it's drawing around, let's see, I guess around nine watts average, up and down a little bit, depending on you know how much charge the battery actually needs. But you know, basically anything that you could use at home, you can use on this as well. 
Now, one of the things they praise about this inverter is it's got multiple protection on board, like over voltage, over current, and so on. So I wanna plug a really heavy load into this and see what happens. So I've got this 1000 watt hair dryer. It's got two settings. So we'll be able to try it on the first setting and then the second setting. I expect it might run on the first setting, but probably not on the second. So let's see what happens. Okay, didn't even start that time. Let's turn it off. You can see that there is a power fault. The light has come on, so we have to turn off the inverter. Turn it back on. It's not damaged at least because our watt meter has now come back on. Let's try and run the hairdryer again. Oh, I kind of spun a little bit, but then it immediately stopped. And again, we've got our power fault. So that's pretty much exactly what it should do. If something's drawing too much power, rather than damaging the internals, it cuts it off to protect itself. And likewise on the input, it's got some fuses here. These are replaceable, which is great because you don't have to open up the unit. Let me try and take off the plastic. There you go. These are just regular car fuses, very easy to replace, which I like. Now, sorry this is a bit of a messy shot, but now we're gonna try and turn on this TV. It's a 42 inch TV, it's plugged in to the inverter. Let's set this to watts. Now, of course, you probably wouldn't want this in a normal car, but you might have it in a, um, let's say a caravan or a mobile home. You can see right now it's actually drawing around 57 watts, quite a high power draw. I didn't realize this, power, this TV drew so much power. Anyway, let's wait for the Chromecast to boot up. There you go. And it's working exactly as you'd expect, 42 inch TV running off the inverter and it's currently consuming around 55 watts. Now let me put all of this back and get you to a more realistic shot. Now earlier I mentioned that there was a limit of how much power you can draw when using this cable here. There's two reasons for that. Firstly, the wires on this crocodile clip cable are thicker so they can carry more current. Secondly, your cigarette lighter socket in your car is usually fused around 10 amps. So 10 amp, 12 volt is around 120 watts. So that's why they recommend if you're gonna draw a lot of power, you have to connect this directly to your battery. Now, if it's in a mobile home or something like that, you're probably gonna use some permanent wiring and not necessarily these clips. But if it's in a solar application or just for times when you have a brownout or a blackout, you might use these connected directly to a battery. Now, if you're planning to connect this to a car, you probably only want to use it when the car is running and the alternator is recharging the battery. Otherwise, you could run the battery down pretty quick. Now, earlier I said pretty much anything you can think of to plug in here, you can plug in, for instance, printers, laptop chargers, battery chargers. But there are some things that aren't advisable to plug into this. For instance, fans, any kind of inductive load. So if it has a compressor or a motor like this in it, it might have issues. Um, so you're talking about fans, you're talking about refrigerators, aircon units, uh, because this is a modified sine wave inverter normally when you draw power from the wall it's got a pure sine wave that goes up like this but when you're using an inverter like this which is a modified sine wave it's actually square so it goes like this like this like this um, and with a lot of inverters that will cause you problems you'll find that your motor will be making a noise it will be consuming a lot more power and it'll be running really hot but Actually, do you know what? I just tested this and this is much better than other inverters. I just used it on this fan and it was, I don't know. I mean, I really couldn't determine a difference between the wall AC socket and this one here, which is quite surprising because I've tried it with other inverters and you hear the noise, you feel the heat. Anyway, let me plug this in. I don't think you'll really be able to tell on the video, but you know, take my word for it. Let me plug this in and turn it on. So the fan is turned on. It's on its highest setting, 220 volts, there's no voltage drop, and it's drawing just around 14 and a half watts. And if we check our voltage, of course, it's pretty much 220 volts, give or take, um, so it is a stable output, although this isn't a very big load anyway. Now let's compare that against this super, super cheap inverter from CDR King, and we should be able to see a difference here. So I can already hear that this isn't running as fast as it was before. And look at the power, it's all over the place. 10 watts, 15 watts, it's not stable at all. And I can feel that the fan is not spinning at a stable speed. So that's the difference between a super, super cheap inverter, which is likely gonna damage your fan over time. It's okay for things like laptop chargers, battery chargers, anything electronic like that, but no good for fans. 
whereas this one from Best Tech surprisingly actually does very well. So yeah, I was actually surprised myself there. That's a big thumbs up. So there you go. Even though it's a modified sine wave inverter, it still does very well. I don't know how they've done it, but somehow they've done it and they've still managed to keep the price down. Now I had read in some reviews that this was quite a good inverter, even for inductive loads like this, but seeing is believing. Now as a final test, let's put the USB charge ports to their test and see if we really can draw as much power as they claim. It's meant to be 5.2 amps across all of the USB ports in total. Okay, so we'll start with this power bank. This normally draws about 1.82 amp, and hopefully you can see on camera, it's drawing 1.7 amp, which is okay. 1.9 amp varies a little bit. That's the power bank rather than the charger. Let's plug something else in. Now let's try plug an iPad in over here. And then we've got 1.9 amp here. And on the iPad, we've got 1.7 amp. That's pretty good. Both are stable, which I like. And last but not least, let's plug in this adjustable dummy load. Now I'm going to move this one down so it's easier to get to the port. Now I know this might be hard for you to see on the screen, so you might have to take my word on this. Let's see how we're charging. We've got 1.7 amp on the iPad, 1.7 to 1.9 amp on the power bank, and then let's turn on our adjustable load and see how high we can go. That's now at one amp and these are staying stable. So that gives us 3.7. Let's go up to two amp. These are 1.7, 1.7 staying stable. So that gives us 4.7 amp total. Let's go up to three amp. Okay, so that's pretty clever. You can see here it's 2.8 and no matter what I do, it's stuck to that. I can go lower, but I can't go higher. So they've got some circuitry in here, which is limiting how much I can draw. Rather than letting me draw too much power, overheating, then turning everything off, it's limiting it. That is very clever. You don't normally see that in these kind of electronics, just the super high end. So I turned this down to a more modest two amp. So that gives us two plus 1.8 plus 1.6 which is actually around 5.4 amp. So it appears that it works as promised. Um, they actually say maximum output of 5.2 amp. I'm drawing 5.4. Uh, I might actually lower it just a little bit because you know, why take any chances? But it seems to do as it says on the box, thumbs up. So that was just a quick review of this inverter from Best Tech. For anyone interested, there's the model number and you can see it's rated for 400 watts. It does have a peak of 1000 watts. That's so that if you have something which draws a lot of power when you first turn it on and then stabilizes at a lower power, it can handle it. So if you're looking for a high quality inverter, pretty much look to Best Tech because they're the best inverter you can get without spending silly amounts of money um, and it gets a big thumbs up from me. Aside from everything I've shown you, it also has a grounding point for the DC side to ground it in your car. It also has a grounding point for the AC side which you don't normally see on inverters so yeah very impressed. Now no doubt you're gonna have some questions if you do just put them in the comment section down below and if you enjoyed this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.